G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Have you ever wondered why the Tango 2 with its fold-up antenna does this? Yeah, why, why not just fly like that? Why, why, do you, why would you turn that antenna to be vertical? Well today I'm going to hopefully explain that to you. I'm going to explain the importance of polarization and not just polarization but matching polarization. Now we, we think about this quite often with FPV because we've got left hand and right hand circularly polarized antennas and you must, mat, must run matching antennas at each end of your FPV link. If you run left hand on one end and right hand on the other the performance is quite significantly compromised and you'll see why when I do a little experiment later on in this video. So when I fly with a normal transmitter that's got one of these rubber ducky antennas, um, I, well, I notice a lot of people fly like that. They have the antenna out the side, horizontal like that, and they get good results. Their planes don't crash, they fly fine, their quads fly okay. But there's a better way. There is a better way. I always fly with my antenna like that, vertical. Now, why do I do that? Just like with the Tango, I have my antenna, transmitter antenna, vertical. And it's for a very good reason because antennas have what they call a radiation pattern. And there's, I've done videos before, uh, you can go and hunt for them, I can't be bothered, um, which I explain radiation patterns and gain and all that sort of stuff. But the bottom line, the most important thing we're talking about here is that most of the signal comes out parallel to the antenna. So it's coming out the sides, it doesn't come out the ends. The ends get very little, very little power comes out the ends of the antenna. They're what we call null points, areas of very low signal. So if you were to measure this, the signal strength here, it'd be very high. If you measure it from this perspective, being above it, you get very little signal. And so that's important because if you're running vertical, then that null point equates to when the model is directly above you, which means it shouldn't be any more than 400 feet away, or directly below you, which means you've landed or crashed and you don't need a radio link anyway. If you run your antenna like this, then it'll work fine most of the time. But if you're flying FPV, for example, and you happen to be, you know, you don't have to look at the model when you're flying FPV. So you might be looking out this way and the model might be over there, which means it could be off the null point of your antenna. You won't realize it that suddenly it's flying in that very low strength of signal area. So it's going to get a very low RSSI and it might go suddenly from very good RSSI to very low RSSI quite quickly. You can get some surprises when that happens. With the vertical one, it's going to be consistent all the way around. Doesn't matter where it bounces around you're flying, you're going to get the same level of RSSI. When it's horizontal, once you fly into the null point, your RSSI and your link quality can drop very, very quickly. And it gets a bit worse though. It gets worse than that because if we look at the antennas on modern receivers, quite often we use these T-style antennas, right? These are basically just a dipole antenna. And just like the antenna on your transmitter, they have a null point off each end. So when, you, when the signal arrives, arrives uh, broadside on, you get a nice strong signal. But if you, so if your transmitter's over here, great signal. Transmitter's over here, not such a great signal. It can be quite weak because it's a null point. So imagine now, if you're flying around and you end up like this, where your null point of your receiver antenna is aligned with the null point of your transmitter antenna, suddenly you've got very little signal. You may even fail safe. If you're far enough away, if you're flying low enough, if the noise level is high enough, you can fail safe at relatively close distances if these things line up. So I, I tremble a little bit when I see people mounting these antennas on their quads, on the arms of a quad like this. So it's horizontal like that. Because what happens there is as your quad is yawing, the null points will sweep past, the, start pointing at your transmitter and you'll get a sudden drop in RSSI. And if your transmitter antenna is pointed at the quad at the same time, well, bad things can happen. So you might say, well, why don't we just run vertical on our transmitter so we've got a nice even pattern all the way around and horizontal on our craft. That way, we'll, we'll, we'll only ever have the antenna nulls, uh, on a receiver antenna nulls having any effect. Unfortunately, the world doesn't work that way because if you run vertical on your transmitter and horizontal on your receiver, you are what's called cross-polarized. And that's a really bad thing. And I'm gonna show you why with this little demo I did at the studio. Okay, simple experiment on the bench here. I've got some LEDs, just white LEDs connected to a power supply. And when I turn the power supply on, you'll see the LEDs light up, nothing unusual there. But I also have some sunglasses sunglasses. These are the ones I wear when I'm flying. Um, I'll put the sunglasses over here. You can see that the, the brightness of the LEDs is reduced a little bit, but not an awful lot. So, but more importantly, what's happening here is these are polarized sunglasses. So they're only allowing light through in one plane. Uh, that is to say, uh, in this case, probably horizontal plane. It could be vertical, doesn't matter. But basically we now have a polarized source of light from those LEDs. And uh, before we go there, let's just take those away. 
I'm going to show you. Here are another pair of sunglasses. Radio Master sent me these actually. How cool is that? Anyway, another set of sunglasses. Do you watch what happens? These are also polarized. Now, I turn these sunglasses, nothing happens, right? Because these are also polarized sunglasses, but we're getting the same amount of light. It's just changing the polarity of it. So think of this as being horizontally polarized. That's vertically polarized. The LEDs are the same brilliance. Let's put our first set of sunglasses down here again. And there's our sunglasses. There's our LED through polarized or polarized light source because it's going through the sunglasses. Now let's put the other set of sunglasses over here. And yeah, you've lost a bit because both glasses have a sort of a tint factor. Um, we've lost a bit of light, but you can still see the LEDs because the polarization of the light source, which is being forced to be in one polarization because of the lens there, matches the polarization of the other end. So we've got matching antennas here, basically. They're both vertical or both horizontally polarized. Now what happens when we get a mismatch? What happens when we have the light source in one polarization plane, but the receiving antenna, so to speak, in another polarizing plane? Will you watch what happens when I turn these? Our light source is basically, we only see a fraction of the light that we see when the lens is in that plane. We do this, there's not a lot of reduction in light, but when we do this, it's almost completely eradicated. See that? Because we have mismatched polarization. This is what happens with our radio frequency signals when we have horizontal on one end, vertical on the other, vice versa, or left hand circularly polarized, right hand circularly polarized. If we mismatch our polarization, effectively we get only a tiny percentage of the signal that's being transmitted at the other end. That's how polarization works, and that's why it's so very important. Right, as you can see there, when we had cross-polarized, when the transmission signal, when, when the light coming up was polarized in one plane, and then we had uh, our receiver antenna basically polarized in another plane, we could virtually not even see the signal. We just couldn't see the lights because the polarization planes didn't line up, and that meant that very little of the signal got through. And that's what happens if you run vertical on your transmitter and horizontal on your craft, or vice versa, if you run vertical on your craft and horizontal on your transmitter, you're cross-polarized. So that means that even if you try and get around the fact of lining up the null points, you're still going to have a problem. So the best way to set your craft up is like I've done with this, which is my general purpose quad. I use Crossfire. So when I'm flying my Crossfire on the Tango 2, I have my transmitter antenna vertical, and you notice that this is the receiver antenna here. It's in a plastic straw, but unfortunately it's bent. It should be sitting straight up and down, but it's got bent back over time. So they are both vertical. And so it doesn't matter where my quad yours, there's never going to be a null point lined up with my transmitter. And it doesn't matter where I fly with respect to myself around in a circle, my transmitter antenna null points are never going to line up with the quad. So I get very, very consistent signal. My, my link quality and my RSSI drop very, very steadily and predictably. I don't suddenly find I'm going from 99% link quality down to, to zero or my RSSI doesn't suddenly plummet just because my quads yawed a bit, or I've flown a little bit to the side of me. And that makes a big difference for the confidence of your flying. I feel very confident flying this quad because it never surprises me. I don't get sudden you know, um, RSSI warnings or, or, or fail safes or anything. And that's super, I like the safety of that. I like the feeling of comfort knowing that I'm not gonna be surprised because 99.9% .9 of the time, it just doesn't really matter. People fly with their transmitters like this and horizontally, um, oriented antennas on their quads and they don't have a problem. But one day, one day you may be flying over water, there may be Wi-Fi activity nearby, um, and you may line up your null points and fail safe splash. So, and I would rather not take that risk because it doesn't take much to remember to put your antenna vertical on your transmitter and to mount your antennas on your quads or on your fixed wings so they're vertical. And then you will not have those surprises. It's really important. In fact, the, the the effect, the cross-polarization effect is so powerful where, you know, if you have a transmitter on one plane and a receiver on the other plane, um, that effect is so powerful, it's actually used to good effect in commercial radio communications. Here's a building nearby with some antennas on it. Notice it's got two antennas the same size, dealing with pretty much the same frequency, but they're at 90 degrees to each other. That means the signals that they're sending and receiving can be very close in frequency without affecting each other because the one antenna will be virtually blind to the signal coming in that's intended for the other antenna and vice versa. So you get much more data in the same amount of spectrum by using alternating polarization like that. And this is what happens sometimes with quad racing. When you want to run eight people in a, in a race, um, you can run 
the channels alternate the, the polarization. So one might be left hand, two is right hand, three is left hand, four is right hand. So if you're on channel two, the channel below you has the opposite polarization and the channel above you has the opposite polarization. So your uh, goggle receiver antenna will be far less sensitive to their signals than the signal from your quad, which has matching polarization. It helps you uh, suppress any inter-channel interference that might occur because the, the, the other bands are real, the, the channels are relatively close and a quad on an adjacent channel might be much closer to you than your quad because you're at the other end of the track. Polarization is a wonderfully interesting thing and a fantastic aspect to radio frequency communications that I think has been greatly under or well, ignored from the point of view of our radio links. Uh, my long range, when I say long range, I don't really fly long range, but my long range fixed wing model is a um, what is it, a bonsai? It's a bonsai, a little bonsai, and you'll see that I have the receiver antenna in a tube vertically oriented, and I run the, the loop dipole on my R9 system, because it's got R9, I run that vertically polarized, and the, there's no RSSI surprises there at all. There you go. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. And if you want to see more videos like this, the, the, in, the instructional, the, the educational ones, go down and say so in the comments. And I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters. You give me the freedom to make these videos without those horrible mid-roll ads or commercial imperatives. So there you go. Questions, of course, down there as well to the commenty bit. I'll do my best to answer them. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Bye for now.